tonight, tonight I want to uh, focus on um, leadership and, uh, you know, all of these ideas, all the things we've talked about, uh, when it comes right down to it, each one of us has to step up and decide whether we're going to uh, take things on. Starting in the 60s, uh, various toilet systems were developed and, and uh, the last generation of toilets, uh, outpost camp at 10,000 feet on the edge of a little uh, meadow and then up at uh, 12,000 feet at trail camp. Uh, these were, there were two toilets and then uh, there was also one up at the summit that uh, was kind of a rock privy affair uh, that the Sequoia Kings Canyon National Park uh, maintained. And this is the last few days of the trail camp um, toilet. And you can kind of see it's, it's just, you know, add more solar panels, more fans, more barrels, more cooler pads and uh, drain rack. Let's build a bigger deck. I mean, it was just the development footprint just continued to, um, it was a um, engineering marvel, but a wilderness manager's nightmare. Uh, Rocky Mountain National Park, which is about uh, 50 or 60 miles uh, from here, uh, for those people who haven't been uh, in this area. Uh, very high uh, elevations for uh, the lower 48 at least. Uh, down here in Long's Peak, there are three uh, separate areas that we have the uh, solar toilets. And then where we'll go on Sunday is uh, Jim Lake. Um, Jim Lake is all rock, uh, no place to dig a, a pit. And uh, same down in Long's Peak, not really any place to uh, use a conventional pit toilet. And this just uh, zooms in and shows you a little bit better where they are. But, um, you know, almost 13,000 feet at the Boulder Field, 11.4 at Chasm, and 11.7 at Chasm Junction. So uh, this is kind of what we have nowadays. This is what we have at the Boulder Field. Um, we actually have two separate toilets there, so we can close one for a cleaning. We have as many people as, as 500 people a day will get here. And uh, so we basically have uh, two, two separate toilets, um, uh, it, plus we have uh, camping there. So this uh, pretty well takes care of the use that we have. Um, haven't had anybody uh, complain too much about uh, the side-by-side -side aspect. In fact, the only complaint I've had is that the toilet, or the toilet seat faces to the uh, north, and uh, people said, well, why don't you face it the other way so that we could look at the mountain, so. <laughs> and this is what we have uh, in Chasm Meadows. Uh, put a bunch of different pictures there of the same thing, but this is one of the latest ones we've built, and it's uh, survived pretty well. There's the hot air panel. You can see the inlet right there. Um, this is the uh, stainless steel uh, pipe that leads it into the vault. Inside the vault, there's the uh, solids basket that separates out the liquids, and uh, the air goes through that, and then it exits uh, on the opposite side via this fan. And uh, the, uh, on this one, the uh, photovoltaic that powers the fan is actually down on the evaporator, um, and it's run on a conduit up here. And this is uh, the latest generation of the uh, uh, liquids evaporator, we increased the height of it a little bit to give a little more chance for the air to get through. And you can see uh, the uh, liquids uh, pipe that comes down from the tray that's underneath the solids basket that separates out the liquid and then it comes down here. And you'll see it coming in in the back. And then there's the photovoltaic panel on top for the fan. It's, yeah, it's crazy. But I, I mean, and I'm not I'm not an engineer, and I, I did work with many engineers on, on the Whitney toilets, and I, it just, when I first got there, there were proposals to build bigger decks to wheel out bigger aeration systems to, to dry bigger vats of, you know, disgusting, it's, it, it was like, 
you know, the facility footprint just continued to grow. And it was like, well, we need drying racks. We need, you know, um, we need to put a fence around because the, the uh, you know, the animals are getting in the, 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 uh, the pits. And, I mean, it was just like these, these cities right, right along the, the, the main trail up Whitney. And uh, so I, I don't know, I just screamed, you know, and, that, and, and, and I was on a mission after that to get these things out of there. And, and it, it was difficult. And uh, we have a maintenance worker goes up, services each toilet. We have um, four in a park. They do Jim Lake one day. They go to Chasm uh, Junction in Chasm Meadows another day, and then they service the Boulder Field on a, a third day, and sometimes they make a, another trip or two up there uh, in the high season. Um, it's not a fun task, but I uh, tease the people that work for me over the years that, well, you get paid in scenery on this job, and uh, you've got about 10 minutes of misery, and then uh, you got a pretty good job the rest of the uh, rest of the day. Uh, we don't actually dump it; uh, we just uh, shovel it out um, directly into uh, panniers for llamas. And you'll see the llamas here. Uh, these llamas are trained to be pack animals; they're not pets, and uh, so we can get about 80 pounds per uh, llama. Um, high season, we might actually do that most of the rest of the summer. We're probably not going to take that much weight out with each one of them. But um, they just, uh, the maintenance worker just basically shovels the solids out of the basket into uh, plastic bags, triple bags, it puts it in a pannier and um, works pretty well. The llama is very even tempered and their uh, hooves don't uh, destroy the trail like uh, horses in this environment tend to chew up the trail a lot more than uh, llamas would. Soon. No, we we go there service those weekly. Oh, they're yeah they're packed out weekly. Yeah, we pack out weekly now. Early season, we're not taking that much out. On high season, we'll definitely take. You know, we have at least two llamas to go up there, and we'll load up both of them. You know, the the climbers up Whitney shit a lot more than the climbers up. <laughs> so there's a lot of waste coming off of Whitney, and uh, when we tried to make changes at Whitney. We were told these were some of the stupidest people on the planet. There was no way that they would figure out a pack out waste system. They would not support it. We did a variety of things. I mean, we I encouraged uh, my rangers to be creative and just mess with people. So while we had the toilets, I'd say, well, just close the toilets for a week and tell them they're full or something like that. And let's put bags up there and tell them they got to use the bags and let them deposit them in the trash cans that we provided there and then next week oh this one's closed you know so we would if those of you that were there during those years i apologize but we were we were trying to do some adaptive management and see if we could actually train people to do different things and so we slowly we would remove toilets we would slowly um, make it uh, less convenient for you we would eventually get you to pack those bags down to the the trailhead and uh, um, so it was a, it was just a great a great effort
you know, and, that, and, and, and I was on a mission after that to get these things out of there. Just the cooperation we got with Sequoia Kings Canyon, uh, it was an interesting, between the Indian National Forest and Sequoia Kings Canyon, we were able to play off of each other. See, the senior managers did not really want to remove the toilets because they knew it was going to be a political hot potato. And so we, we removed, on the Inyo side of the equation we removed one toilet and then the park said well those guys removed one so we're going to remove one and then we took well we have to now because the park so we went back and forth with this explaining to senior management that hey we we're in this together and we were in agreement that these facilities needed to come out so that worked out well um, like i said the rangers would much rather pick up a few few bags along the trail than than clean these these uh, toilets. I had a lot of negative feedback about it looks worse since the toilets are gone, you know, and and although the rangers were saying, you know, it looks a lot better, you know. What, what we found is that people are pretty flexible, you know, like, let's see, do you want to use a bag or uh, if you don't, then you, you don't get to climb Whitney, you know, and they're like, where's the bag? And a lot of these articles, you know, when the LA Times or the New York Times wanted to come and do a Whitney article, I'm like, if it's a, if it's a yuck, yuck, you know, laugh it up story, I'm, I'm not interested and no, we don't have a permit for you. And then the other question is this uh, area, is this a designated wilderness area? It yeah. is, yeah. And these were put in before we were formally designated as wilderness. But in our wilderness plan, and maybe Jim Dugan back here can uh, answer that question a little better, but basically it says uh, facilities that are appropriate can be uh, maintained within the wilderness. Now, if we were starting from scratch, we'd have some real serious discussion about this, I'm sure. But if you look at on a it's a net gain to the environment. If I'm taking 10,000 uses out of the boulder field um, and we're not putting all that urine and all that feces into the water, you know, it's just underneath those rocks, it's definitely a net gain for the wilderness. And that's one reason these um, toilets are so minimal if you look at the size. They're not real sexy on the architecture. And one of the reasons is to, to minimize its visual profile so that we're in the wilderness. I didn't, I'll just tell you this, but you'll enjoy this. So the second toilet, I did not tell my boss we were on our way up there to torch it. And uh, he, he found out about it and uh, he wasn't happy. But we, and then I said, well, what do you want me to do? He said, get rid of it. I'm like, thank you. You know, and then we went, went and did it. So anyway. And then I, you know, I think it's a new day for Whitney. So this was. This used to be outpost camp. This is outpost camp now. The toilet's gone. And this was the last day I was up 
there and uh, it's gone. I, I apologize to Sequoia Kings Canyon for a large black plume of smoke over into the park, but they were okay with that. And then we had, uh, we had Student Conservation Association crew go up and, and uh, clean it up and, and it's gone. It's definitely a new day. It's a new experience and the, the pack out system, I mean, I don't have a lot of uh, uh, smear pictures or, or uh, well, I'm not going into what's in the bag or how you do it or any of that, but um, I think it's a pretty simple, simple system and there's been, been a lot of support for it. And the way that we uh, measure success is we weigh the, you know, we know how much a barrel weighs down at the trailhead and, and we take so many barrels to the, to the dump and we multiply that and we come up with a figure that lets us know that the users are, and then we're just doing anecdotal, you know, they'll count the number of bags that are left up on the mountain. But like I said, the rangers would much rather pick up a few, few bags along the trail than, than clean these, these uh, toilets. When it comes right down to it, each one of us has to step up and decide whether we're going to uh, take things on.